this video we're talking about applied optimization and in this particular problem we've been told that the total of the length plus the girth of a box can't exceed 120 inches and then we've been asked what dimensions maximize the volume of the box if the end of the box is a square. So there's a lot going on in this question. There usually is a lot going on in applied optimization questions. The first thing you want to do is get right to the heart of what do I need to maximize or minimize? So you're looking at the question, what do I have to maximize or minimize? Well, this tells us clearly what dimensions maximize volume. So right away, we can go ahead and underline maximize volume. That's what we need to do. Maximize volume. Well, whatever we're asked to maximize or minimize, that's what we're going to need a function for. So because we've been asked to maximize volume, we're going to need a function for volume. So we're going to need a function for volume of the box. Well, we've got a picture of our box here. We know that the volume of any box is just the width times the length times the height. So we have this formula here, volume equals length times width times height. So once we identify what kind of function we're going to need, we need this function for volume because we've been asked to maximize volume, we have to get that function in terms of one variable only. Right now it's in terms of three variables, length and width and height. We need it in terms of one variable. So how are we going to do that? Well, that's where we go back to the problem for additional information. One thing we can identify to get rid of one of the variables, we've been told that the end of the box is a square. So if we look at the end here, it's a square, which means that this distance here is going to be equal to this distance right here, because if it's a square, then it has to be the same on all four sides. Well, this bottom here is defined by the width, the side is defined by the height, right? So what we can say, because the end is a square, we can say that width has to be equal to height. So if width is equal to height, and our volume formula becomes volume is equal to length times w, and then instead of times h, we'll put w in its place. So we'll get w squared. So now we have volume is equal to the length times w squared. Well, we still have two variables in our volume equation. We need our volume equation in terms of one variable only. So what else does the problem tell us? Well, it tells us that the total of the length plus the girth can't exceed 120 inches. Girth is just the distance around the box. So we've gone ahead and drawn a line here around the box to indicate the girth. The girth plus the length can't be more than 120 inches. We want to use all 120 inches if we can, because after all, we're trying to maximize volume. So we're trying to make the box as big as possible. So basically, we're saying length plus girth has to equal 120. So if we go ahead and say, 120 is equal to length plus girth. Well, what's girth? Girth is this distance around the box, and if we look at the distance around, we can see that the distance across the bottom here, that's just the width. The distance up the side here, that's just the height. The distance across the top, that's the width again. And the distance back down this side is just the height again. So girth is really just 2w plus 2h. So we can go ahead and say 120 is equal to the length plus 2w plus 2h. That's girth. Well, remember too, we said that the width is equal to the height because the end is square. So we can go ahead and make a substitution. And instead of h, we'll call this w, and then we can say 120 is equal to length plus 4w. Now if we solve this equation for length, l, by subtracting 4w from both sides, we get length is equal to 120 minus 4w. Now we can take this value we found for l, 120 minus 4w, and plug it into our volume equation for l to get volume in terms of width only. So what we'll get is volume is equal to, and then instead of l, we'll plug in 120 minus 4w multiplied by w squared. Now if we simplify, we get volume equals, we'll distribute the w squared, 100w squared minus 4w cubed. Now we have a volume equation in terms of one variable only. Once we get to this stage, our next step is always going to be to try to find critical points of the volume function. The way that we find critical points is by taking the derivative and setting the derivative equal to zero to solve for the variable. So we'll take the derivative of volume and we'll call that volume prime, v prime, is equal to 240w minus 
12w squared. Now once we've got our derivative, we set it equal to zero. So zero equals 240w minus 12w squared. And now we wanna go ahead and solve for w. We'll go ahead and divide through both sides by 12 to simplify. We'll get zero equals 20w minus w squared. We'll factor out a w and get zero is equal to w times 20 minus w. And now using zero theorem, we can say w has to be equal to zero or it has to be equal to 20. Well, think about it. We can't have w equal to zero because if the width of the box were equal to zero, the box wouldn't exist. So the width can't possibly be zero, which means the width has to be 20. Now w equals 20 represents a potential critical point of the function. A critical point is just a point where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. Because we've only found one critical point, this is probably the value for width that maximizes the volume of the box, but we need to prove it. So what we're gonna do to prove it is use the first derivative test. And the way we use the first derivative test, we just go ahead and sketch a number line out like this. This is really simple. We just sketch out a number line. We take our potential critical point, w equals 20, and we plot that right in the middle. So w equals 20. And then we pick values on either side of this. So we'll pick w equals 19 and w equals 21. And these two values we pick on either side are the values that we're going to test in the first derivative. Remember, this is the first derivative test. So we're going to be plugging these two values into the first derivative v prime. So I always like to go ahead and say v prime. So I remind myself which function I'm plugging into. So then what I want to do is plug in both 19 and 21 to my first derivative v prime. So I'm going to say v prime of 19 is going to be equal to 240 times 19 minus 12 times 19 squared. And what's important here is whether or not this right-hand side results in a positive value or a negative value, not the specific value of this right-hand side. If we do the arithmetic here, what we see is that we end up with a positive value. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's go ahead and test 21, w equals 21, into the first derivative. So we'll say v prime of 21 is gonna be equal to 240 times 21 minus 12 times 21 squared. And if we do the arithmetic there, what we see is that we get a negative value. So with these results, we're gonna go ahead and plot these results on our number line. So when w was equal to 19, we got a positive value. When w was equal to 21, we got a negative value. So what that tells us then is that when the derivative is positive, the original function is increasing. So we can go ahead and say, increasing, we'll draw an increasing line. When the derivative is negative, the original function is decreasing, so we'll draw a decreasing line like this. We have an increasing original function, decreasing original function, and when we have increasing on the left and decreasing on the right, visually we can see, and this proves to us, that the function has a maximum at w equals 20 because we're going up then down this is literally the maximum of the function and because we tested v prime the derivative of the volume function what we can say is that w equals 20 maximizes the original function v or in other words that w equals 20 maximizes volume so we've proven that w equals 20 maximizes volume but with any applied optimization and problem it's very, very important you always go back to the problem to make sure you answer the question you're being asked because the answer is not necessarily just gonna be now w equals 20. In this particular question, we're asked what dimensions maximize the volume? Well, we know that w is gonna be equal to 20, but if we're gonna give dimensions of the box, we have to give width, length, and height. So it's important here that we also find the length and the height. Well, remember, we said that the end of the box was square, which told us that the width was equal to the height. Since the width is 20, that means the height also must be 20. Let's go ahead and say length equals, width equals, height equals. So we already know that the width is 20. Because w is equal to h, we know that height is also 20. What about the length? Well, remember, we have this equation here for length. Length is equal to 120 minus 4 times the width. So if we just go ahead and plug in w equals 20, we get length equals 120 minus 4 times the width of 20, or length equals 4 times 20 is 80, 120 minus 80 is 40. So we're going to get a length of 
40, and this is then what we should give as our final answer because we've been asked what dimensions maximize volume, so our answer is the dimensions 40 by 20 by 20 are the dimensions that maximize the volume of this box.